Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode. We're talking about competition today and who we're really competing with. Is it ourselves or is it other people? Um, what brought about this topic to my mind is I'm going through a rebrand right now with my branding company, um, which is so cool and so exciting. Um, worth me telling you kind of the story up front. So I have made the decision that I'm going to dismantle EML. I'm completely dismantling the EML Strong Start program. Um, I'm dismantling the company. And I'm rebranding just as myself, EV Fats. Because the main reason behind it is that with EML, Eat, Move, Live, the whole, the whole association there is limited to fitness. And although I was involved in fitness and still am very fit and deal with health and nutrition and a lot of my guests talk to me about those things and I love it, it's not all I do. And in actuality, being associated solely with fitness was really limiting my personal potential. So I am passionate about helping people create better lives. And a big part of that is how you eat. A big part of that is what you do if you exercise, if you take good care of your body. A big portion of that is your physical health. But there's so much more to it. And quite honestly, I felt, I felt like talking about just food or just exercise was somewhat like I just outgrown it. And I love to help people and, you know, share ideas here and there, which I'll continue to do. And my guests on this show are going to continue to be in those topics, but we're going to broaden it out from there. My whole goal is to help people live a better life. And that goes beyond just what you eat or your physical health. It has so much about, so much to do with every other aspect of your life. And so I just don't want to be associated with the fitness world solely anymore. <laughs> and then I had to come to this realization too. I'm going to be 50 this year. And that isn't old by any means. But if I want to be viewed by the world as some fitness guru, then I would have to be willing to like give up everything else I do and commit to being like the next Denise Austin, <laughs> right? Because that's the way the world perceives fitness and the persona that goes along with fitness. And that's not me. That's not what I want to do. Not only would I have to lose like 100 points off my IQ, but I would have to be dedicated to doing nothing but working out. And that's not what I do anymore. I've made a big transition in my life. And it only makes sense that my brand and my company and my focus in the world has a transformation right along with me. So I am super stoked. I am going to scrap the EML. Obviously, I'm not scrapping this show. My podcast is like the high, one of the highlights of my life. But we are just going to call it EV Fats Radio, talking truth, all the things you need to hear that nobody else is willing to say. So, and it actually almost makes more sense for my podcast to be called EV Fats Radio because most people that listen to it or tune in are here because it's me, not because it's called EML, and they have a harder time finding it when it's called EML. Um, so anyway, that's exciting news for me and a big step and scary because here, I'm going to share this with you. I realized as I was making this really big decision to kind of dismantle this online brand that I had going and that I've worked for five years on. I have an operations director. I have a technology gal that works with me. Um, we move them on to Copal, my food company solely. So now it's just me. Um, under the EV Fats brand. But I realized something when I made this decision. And it was that I had not been willing or comfortable to just make me the brand 
because I didn't feel worthy of it. Like I have done so much deep work, you know, quitting drinking back in September. That was a big start of it, but it was just a piece of it. Alcohol was one piece of it, but it was much deeper than that. It had to do with really kind of willing to go back and heal some some open wounds that just needed to be healed and really step into who I'm really capable of being. And I say it, I've said it to some close friends that, you know, when, when I started to be, when I started to be willing to kind of take a look at who I really am and what I really want in life, it was so exciting. It was hard work and it is hard work still. But it was like as if I'd been re it's like I'd been introduced to myself, a version of myself I never knew before, um, which is probably worthy of a show in and of itself, because me being me being introduced to a new me means that all the people in my life have to be kind of introduced to this new me too, um, which isn't easy, but we'll save that. And maybe that's something that I'll bring Casey on for. Um, but anyway, I was... It's scary to have me as the brand. For one, because I didn't feel worthy. It's like, oh my gosh, who's going to listen to me? Why would they want to wear something with my name on it? Like all these self-doubts that we all have, right? Like I have them too. Um, And it's humiliating if people reject you. And if the brand was EML and people rejected it or chose not to tune in or didn't like what I had to say, it was almost as if it was like they were rejecting EML, not me personally. (laughs) as crazy as that may seem, it was easier for me to separate failure or rejection from the outside world if it wasn't me personally, right? It was just the brand, which is still isn't personal if it's my name. Um, But it feels awfully good to just be able to own the success and own all the failures along with it. So it's very exciting time over here. Um, But why this, what this has to do with competition is I was going through the process of this rebrand. And there's a whole entire really just thought-provoking workbook that my design team had me do. Um, And I say my design team. This is a company that has worked to do all the branding for Copow. We're working on two other projects right now, Design Room. Gal's name is Nicole, who are phenomenal people, like beyond talented. So shout out to them. Um, But anyway, I was going through this workbook. And part of the process was listing out three, yeah, I think it's three, three direct competitors and then three indirect competitors. And I was like, oh, that's hard. And I think the questions were like, who is the direct competitor? What is that person or that brand's strength? What is their weakness? Um, and then we also had, I also had to list out like leaders or influencer celebrity types in the industry that I am in. So I was like, God, I racked my brain to figure out like, well, who are competitors? And I have the workbook out here with me because it was so interesting. Um, There was, and really it's more like authors and other people that offer self-help and encouragement and inspiration to people, right? And so for me, just a side note, I'm going in that direction. I am working on my first book. I can't work on my first book if all I'm doing is focusing on fitness stuff and spread too thin and all these other coaching areas. So I'm really just going to start cranking out my books, which is so fun. But who is who is a competitor in that space? And I didn't hesitate to write down the names that I wrote down. And they were Mel Robbins, Rachel Hollis, And there was one more. Oh, and Tony Robbins. Now, (laughs) I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, I listed what I thought each of those individuals' strengths were. I listed what I felt their weaknesses were. And then I moved on into the indirect competitors. The indirect competitor, and this is the one that made me stop and then go, wow, this is really kind of interesting work. I wrote down Joe Rogan. Okay, let's get something straight here. (laughs) If you asked Joe Rogan who his competitor, even indirect competitor is, it wouldn't be me. (laughs) That's laughable, right? So what does that mean? Does that mean that 
I'm fooling myself into thinking I am a competitor to that level? And the answer is no. You know, as I had to send it to my design team, they know me well. We've been working for a couple of years together now. But I thought, I'm not even embarrassed to put that out there because Nicole gets me. And she's someone that believes in me, which I do not have anybody in my life that doesn't believe in me, right? If anybody's going to laugh at my dream or think, yeah, right, good luck, like they have no place in my world. So as I sent it, I thought, you know, I could be really embarrassed about writing down that Joe Rogan is my indirect competitor in the podcasting world. But then I thought, you know what? I'm not ashamed of that because I have dreams and goals and it's okay to write them down and to speak them out loud. And beyond that it's just okay, it is absolutely necessary. It is necessary for us to say them out loud, write them on paper. This also includes like creating a whole entire mood board and design board where I put who I am and what I'm trying to accomplish on a board so I can actually visualize it. That is necessary. Not only is it okay, you have to do those things if you actually want to play big. If you want to play big in your life, whatever that is, you have to actually be willing to put it out there. And so, you know, if you think about it, these aren't necessarily my direct competitors per se. And they're definitely not people I'm thinking about on the daily. Like, are you kidding me? When I think about Rachel Hollis, I think, oh my God, if that bitch can sell books, I can sell 3 million copies of my first one. Really? (laughs) I'm just not a big fan. I'm not Rachel Hollis bashing. I don't relate to her. A lot of people do. Not my gig. So the point is, I don't actually actively compete with other people. I can look to other people and see what they've accomplished and like, you know, like take a close look at, inspect. What have they done? Maybe that I'm not doing and they're doing better than me, right? Rachel Hollis is doing something because she's already published her book and she sold a lot of copies of it. Okay, well, that's something I haven't done. What is she doing? Like her or not, it doesn't matter. So the point is you can have people that, that you find aspirational and that you can learn from, from a distance. But that is different than actively competing with those people on the daily. And you know what? Me competing with Joe Rogan for podcast viewers may seem laughable, But how much more laughable is it than you competing with someone, maybe even someone you know, that either doesn't know you exist or doesn't matter, right? That the person doesn't think about you. That's, it's no more laughable, right? Because they don't have to know who you are for you to say, you know what? Like, that's someone that I want to be at their level. But having someone that you look to that you're aspiring to reach or to catch, like for me, I always have someone I'm trying to catch. But I don't spend my time actively thinking about that person every day. Because if I did, I I wouldn't be doing the work that's required for me to actually get to where they are. I think you've probably, I don't know what, I don't know what race it is. I, I don't know. I don't really. F- oh, it was um, it was a Michael Phelps finish where the guy they're, they're coming across the finish line in a race. Like, I don't know anything about swimming. And the guy who comes just a very close second to him is caught looking. They ca- the camera catches him looking back like over his shoulder. And that is when Michael Phelps won. Because he was busy, his the guy who came in second was busy looking over his shoulder to see who was behind him. And the point of that and the power behind that is if we are so focused on who we're ahead of and who we're beating, we are going to miss 
the work and the absolutely laser sharp focus it takes for us to get where we want to go in life. So it's not about who are you competing with. Sure, there's people I want to, there's people I want to beat. Right? There's people at the end of the day where I'm like, you know what? Like, I am going to be at a place maybe higher financially, higher in book sales. I am going to beat that person. But that isn't my main focus. My main focus is competing with myself. Competing to make sure that every single day I am becoming better and better and better and better at being me. That's how, that's how I'm going to blow doors and sell millions of books. That's how it's going to be done. It's not going to be me talking or thinking about someone else, Mel Robbins or Tony Robbins or Martha Stewart, right? In the brand that I definitely eventually want to be able to build. Like we're talking empire big. You guys listening or watching this, probably your, your, your mind's probably not even capable of going as big as what I'm dreaming. Okay. I don't get there by thinking about those people. I get there by competing with myself every single day and making sure that every day I am just a little, even if it's just a tiny fraction of a sliver, that I am better every single day. Am I more disciplined? Am I making sure that I'm getting out of bed every single day at the same time. I have to do that. You know why you have to do that? You have to do that because you have to have a lot of fucking energy. You have to have a lot of energy to be able to want to win and get better every single day at life or at being you. You don't do that by sleeping in three days out of the week. doesn't happen. It doesn't even happen by sleeping in two days out of the week. And it's not because you're working yourself to death. That's what I want to... I want to... I, want, I didn't even think about talking about this, but this is something I want to really hammer home. When I say get up at the same time every day, I do not mean because I'm going out and working myself to death. Not even close. I get up at the same time every day because I really know how to run an efficient circadian rhythm. I know how to make sure that my internal clock is working like a champ and is finely tuned because that's how I have energy throughout the day. That's how I don't have mood swings. That's how I feel energized throughout the morning. It's how I feel most creative in the morning. It's how I get my workout in. It's how I make sure I eat the right foods. All of those things are contingent upon me getting up at the same time every day. So for all of you that are listening or hear like me talking about how it's important to get up at the same time every day and think, well, well, she just works too hard. You know what? Like, I don't care. I'm not that driven. Like, I don't need to do that. I'm not talking about going to work at five o'clock in the morning. Shit, most days I'm not even doing anything until around eight. I may be writing or reading, meditating. Now I'm doing Tai Chi, which I love. I'm doing something in the morning, but it's really kind of setting the tone for my day. And I'm setting my circadian rhythm to make sure that I am at my best every day. So I have to do that. What else do I have to do? I have to make sure that I'm doing the work in order to make all those things happen. If I want to sell millions of copies of a book, what do I need to do? I need to read a lot and I need to write a lot. And I make sure that every single day I do those things. Because you know what happens when you do things every day? You get better. You get better. <laughs> and that's the only way you get better. So when you show up and do the required work, even just the little pieces, you guys, you may not be trying to sell millions of copies of a book, but I guarantee there are things you want in your life. There are areas of your life just being you that you want to be better at. You have to be willing to do and show up every single day to do the little pieces of work it takes in order for you to be better every day. And in that comes laser sharp focus of competing with yourself, not others. So my success has absolutely nothing to do with Rachel Hollis or Mel Robbins or Tony Robbins or Martha Stewart or Joe Rogan. 
It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with me wanting to be better every day and competing with myself. Because you're absolutely right. Joe Rogan has no idea who I am. Hopefully one day he will because I, it's on my bucket list to have him on my show or to be on his show. But he doesn't know who I am. So I don't spend my time thinking, actively competing with him. It's a waste of my time. Instead, I'm actively competing with myself every day. That's my yardstick. That's how I'm measuring. Am I going in the right direction? Am I achieving the things I'm trying to achieve? I measure that against me, not against other people. So here's the truth I'm going to leave you with today. If you are busy comparing yourself to others and constantly focusing on where others are at and how much further everyone else is ahead of you, you will never catch them. You will never catch them. The person you should be competing with every single day you open your eyes is you. You're the only one that matters. You are the only one at the end of the day that knows whether or not you gave it your all and you worked hard and you showed up and did you get better at just one thing each day. Don't waste your time comparing yourself to everybody else out there. When you do that, your dreams and your ideal life will never happen. Compete within yourself, not with others. Hope you found this helpful. I'm on fire over here, just letting you know, and I am doing big shit, and it feels really good, a little bit scary, but mostly really, really good. So be watching as our rebrand starts to roll out over the next couple of months. I'm really excited about it, and you will see EML Radio becoming EV Fats Radio. Um, if you enjoy these episodes, be sure that you actually follow me over on Locals. Follow me. I just said follow me. Jeez, don't follow me. I'm not like David Koresh. <laughs> Come join me on my community, right? My community of just really awesome people that I do live. I do live stuff with all the time, at least once or maybe usually like maybe twice, three times a week where we just do live streams where I'm chatting and helping people giving people the kind of tools and things that I'm going through that they can just take pieces of and implement in their own life. So to do that, you just need to go over to evfats.locals.com and join the subscribers there. And then if you want just little drops of inspiration or just encouragement or sometimes a little kick in the ass in your day, make sure that you get involved in my text community as well. Number is 702-500-1668. I would love to see you over on those platforms so that we can engage up close and personal. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you next time. 